This is 39 WDZL, your movie station. One, two, three, time again for Tennessee, Tuxedo and his tail. In the vast frozen wastes of the South Pole, icy winds and snow shape a bleak landscape. Yet there are many animals who make their homes in this frigid land. Animals cleverly adapted by nature to live in sub-freezing temperatures, like the penguin. Achoo! And the, uh, walrus. That's funny, I thought walruses came from the North Pole. Uh, yeah. Well, I was headed south, but I must have overshot. Some place to land, eh? No excitement, no activity, and there's always a draft. Boy, would I love to be in a nice warm hotel room in the big city. But you're a penguin and a walrus. Tennessee Tuxedo is the name, and this is my chum, Chumley. A pleased to meet you. Yes, well, uh, <clears throat> to this icy land come explorers and zoo collectors like Stanley Livingston and his assistant, Flunky. Now keep your eyes open, Flunky. All we need is one more unusual specimen. Hey, boss, look! Jumping giraffes, a South Pole walrus. Quick, Flunky, get the cage. Wait till they see him back in the big city. The excitement, the activity. What a warm reception he'll get. Did you say warm, excitement, activity, the big city? We'll take the job. Right, Chumley? Uh, absolutely. A walrus and a penguin. I have a feeling I may regret this, but lower away, Flunky. <laughs> big city. So we end up in a zoo. Chumley, we've got to get out of here and get jobs. If we get jobs like people, we'll be treated like people. Hey, look at this ad. Phineas J. Woofy, the man with all the answers. Come to me with your problems. Just what we need. Now listen, Chumley, here's my escape plan. And so not long afterwards, one morning, Stanley Livingston, keeper of the zoo, was stunned by what he saw. You flunky, you flunky, that pesky penguin and walrus have escaped again. I didn't see him, boss. But look at this paper here. There's an ad encircled, wanted two auto mechanics, must hire today. But there's no address. Call the police. Here we go again. At that very moment, Tennessee Tuxedo and Chumley were applying for their latest job. A penguin and a walrus yet? Well, I guess I got no choice. I gotta cover the gas pumps. You guys uh, take over back here, okay? Nope. We don't know nothing about mechanics. But this would be a good place to learn. Uh... You want to get your teeth fixed, fella. I can't understand a word you're saying. All right, Chumley. Let's get into some coveralls. There now. Chumley, will you please take off that ridiculous disguise? That is the silliest looking mask I have ever seen. Listen, boo-boo, this is my face, see? And if you like yours, you better like mine. My name's Rocky Mononoff, and that's my car. I want it fixed perfect by 3 o'clock today. Ah, uh, uh, sure. Uh, sure, Mr. Mononoff. And unless it runs perfect, I'll play you two goofs a tune on my violin. Well, we've got a customer, Chumley. You know what we're going to do first? Leave. That's right, leave. No, Chumley. We're going to fix this car. Now, I look under the hood while you push the start. Okay, Chumley? Okay, sure. But I don't know how to start a car. Of course you can start the car. Just push that button. Real slow, 
switch somebody. Now, let's get back to work. Several hours later, the master mechanics surveyed their work. Look at that. Broken, ruined, junked. The whole engine. Now we'll have to build a new one. Gee, Tennessee, maybe it's time we went to see the man what's got all the answers. I know. It's time to see Mr. Whoopi. Let's go. Do you have a riddle, Chumley? Yeah. Why isn't my nose 12 inches long? Because that would make it a foot. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, Mr. Whoopi, we've got to learn how to build a motor for this car, or Mr. Malinoff is going to play us a tune on his fiddle. Uh, yeah, he's going to shoot us with a gun. Hmm, <laughs> well... I guess we'd better uh, step on the gas, eh? <laughs> oh, yes. Now, where did I put my three-dimensional blackboard? Perhaps in the closet. Here it is, my fantastic 3D BB. And this is an auto engine. Let's see what's inside, shall we? You see, there are four tubes called cylinders. And inside each cylinder is a kind of plunger called a piston. You see? Have you got that, Chumley? The engine has four cylinders, and inside each cylinder is a plunger called a piston. Okay, Mr. Whoopi, go ahead. Oh, well, a little gas and air come into the cylinder. Now, gas is very, very explosive. So when a spark plug at the top of the cylinder makes a spark, there is an explosion which pushes the piston down. Okay. Gas comes into the cylinder, a spark plug makes a spark, and the explosion makes the piston go down. Perfect, my boy. And then, then of course, the piston comes back up and pushes out the burned up gas. Then back down, pulling in more gas in there. Then back up for another spark. And whoopee! Our motor is running as the cycle is repeated over and over. And naturally, the same business takes place in all the other cylinders, too. Okay, Mr. Whoopee, thanks. We've got it now. Wait! But wait! But it was too late to stop our heroes. Soon at the garage... See? There are the cylinders. Now you hop in the car and push the starter. Hey, we've been robbed. Somebody walked off with the wakes. What? Someone has stolen the dashboard and steering wheel. Chumley, you're sitting in the back seat. Ooh. That's better. Now start the motor. Oh, boy, can it be? It wakes. It wakes. <laughs> of course it works. Tennessee tuxedo will not fail. Now, let off the brake and back it out of here. The uh, J Tennessee, she won't go. Uh, why don't you give us the push, huh? What do you mean, push you? If the car won't go by itself, there must be something wrong. Come on. But, <laughs> I tried to tell you, boys. Of course your motor won't move the car. You haven't connected it to the wheels. Oh, yes. Well, that does sound important. Better make a note of that, Chumley. Now, how do we connect up the motor? Well, <laughs> first, each of the pistons we were talking about has a rod on the bottoms called <laughs> a piston rod. Each rod is fastened to the crankshaft. I get it. When the pistons go up and down, the crankshaft goes round and round. Right. And because the crankshaft is connected to the rear wheels, it makes them go round and round and whoopee, away we go. Phineas J. Whoopee, believe me, you're the greatest. All right, Chumley, I've connected the piston rods to the crankshaft. Now start up the car and back it out. No, no, Chumley, I said back, back, yeah! Would you mind letting me in? Look out! That's Mr. Malinoff! Good work, you two. You caught the big bank robber, Rocky Malinoff. So you're pretty good detectives, even if you are terrible mechanics. Hey, Chumley, there's an idea. Private detectives. Private detectives, eh? <laughs> Fine. Here's your first case.
Tennessee and Chumley will be right back with more cartoon fun.